Some species are so small they can't be seen with the naked eye, but they're changing the way we look at life in Alberta. As part of the management team of the ABMI, the Alberta Biodiversity Monitoring Institute, curator Dr. Tyler Cobb is involved in a province-wide initiative to better understand biological diversity in Alberta. The ABMI project is really a biodiversity study. It's a jointly delivered project by the Alberta Conservation Association, uh, the Alberta Research Council, the University of Alberta and the Royal Alberta Museum. The sites are laid out across the province on a grid that's, that's spaced out every 20 kilometers. So there's 1,656 sites, and the intention is to sample those every five years. As the ABMI team studied Alberta's biodiversity, an often overlooked organism came to the forefront as a major player in helping to understand and follow environmental change. And it's easy to see why they're usually passed over. Your average mite in Alberta is going to be somewhere between a half and, and uh, two-thirds of a millimeter in length. And mites are literally everywhere. I mean, we have mites that live on our bodies, mites that live in the soil, they live in house dust, they live in stored products, they live on plants. The group that we're studying is the orbatted mites. Because the terrestrial ecosystem is, is really based on the soil, the mites play a, a pretty important role in maintaining that soil ecosystem. Since 2007, the ABMI has collected more than 13,000 specimens of mites from across Alberta. What they discovered was remarkable, not only for the Institute, but for the entire scientific community. Anytime you find new species that have never been recorded, it's exciting. 25 new species of, of mites is, is really a significant find, and it really indicates how much we still need to learn about the, the biodiversity in our own backyard. But if mites are microscopic, how did Tyler and his team collect them all? By constructing an extracting device. It's a Berlizzi Tulgren funnel design. The funnel works with a heat source, which is the light, and the sample is placed on top of the funnel. The light source creates the heat that slowly dries out the sample, and the mites actually migrate away from that dry soil down through the funnel, and they're collected in the, in the sample cup at the bottom. Once they've extracted the mites from the sample, it's up to the museum's team of researchers to figure out just what kind of mite they're dealing with, because sometimes they discover something new. You have to know what mites are already described, and these mites have been described from all around the world. So you have to pull through the literature to find out what's been described, compare that to the ones known from around here, and see if my species fit those, and if they don't, I have a good idea they're new. Like this um, very large, strange, hairy-looking creature. So right now I know there's at least two dozen, perhaps as many as three dozen new species in Alberta, and this project's just started. We don't understand what they're doing in the soil ecosystem. We know that, that this group of soil mites are important in the overall soil health, but when a species goes extinct without us knowing what they're doing, we can't really predict what the impacts are gonna be. It is this discovery of the unknown that drives Tyler and his team to find and understand a very small animal that plays a very big role in the health of Alberta's ecosystems. Few are going to argue against the notion that we're in the midst of a biodiversity crisis. Species are going extinct at rates greater than anything uh, we've seen in the fossil record. When you start to think about the fact that we are finding new species almost every day um, in our own backyards, you start to wonder about um, how many of these things are going extinct without us even discovering them.